Here we go. Alright, so get the end of the shaft. We're taping up, just give it a file it down so there's no sharp bits. Inside. Ideally you do this on your cutting tool, but you know, the dremel's a bit small for it. of an inch from the end, shaft will fit down to there, about there. That's my tape mark. show you why. Every shaft needs to have tape under it of some sort. There's the end. Get a half inch cut. Nice clean cut. That down there. Right. Gently and gradually wrap that around. You can buy machines that do this shit if you want. Oh look, I'm, you know, we don't need that shit going in the background, do we guys? Piss that off. That'll be the, that'll be the bird, the glare. Okay, so there we go. Don't worry about that. Doesn't matter. There we go, we've got a little bit of an overhang. We give that a twist. We tuck that in, that seals the shaft. See? Let's pop that off. So that seals it up, a little bit of tape. That's important, that stops the moisture getting in there. And it allows us to blow the, sh the grip back off. So, put that on there. two ways of fitting a grip. Let's get rid of this first. Sometimes I can leave that on but other times it just it's not really worth it. It can interfere with your blow on. See you can have the grip on that way with the lambkin on top and the mark so you can turn it over and have it clean. Okay, so you use the sides. Jake wants them like that. Nice and clean. Yeah. Right. Do that. 
Mouth. That on there. Stick that in there, in the nozzle, in the hole in the end. All right. he blows it up like a balloon. He uses the he uses the inox in this case, or petrol works. Any sort of lubricant, any sort of that dries and leaves. Blows it up like a balloon, slips it on. And then if I want to take that off, I can just reverse the process. I can just stick that in there. Push that button, blow it up, and it'll come straight back off. Now I've got that lined up with the head there. That down there. And that there's Jake's first golf club. First four iron. He doesn't have a three iron. So there you go. One completed Mizuno MP68 blade forged with a KBS Tour X shaft in it mid-size lambkin grips plain black, nice and soft that'll take a few hours to dry that inox, this shit works well but it takes a little while to dry in the meantime it'll help clean the club because that's what it does so there you go one finished club Bloody nice, actually. Bloody nice. Yeah, that's a nice club. Jake will like that. Okay. I've got a whole lot of others to do. I don't think I need to... Oh, why not? Let's do another one. I can show you how. Let's make sure that... We've got a decent video of the first one, so... In case we missed out on the first one. Any sort of file will do this. It's really just to stop it ripping through the tape. Protector in place. Uh, grip. I take it to the top of the double lines there. Like it there. 
that was his toe. Pull it out past the length I need. Right up the middle of the shaft. Half an inch past. This tape might, might do a little bit more than that, maybe do an inch or so. This tape, that last club was a little bit iffy. Gently wrap it around. Twist it up. Plug the butt end up. As the saying goes, you've got to plug the butt end. And you can't cut the tips off these because they're taper. Parallel tips, you can cut the tape tips off them, so you can butt cut or tape, tape, tip cut those. Uh, grip. Do that in there. Do that along there. And the side, squeeze it like a fish mouth or a frog mouth. So it opens up nice and wide and you push it on. Like that. In the end. Sticker and take it up to the end of the tape. Excuse the noise, but I didn't have as much pressure as I thought then. So that was a bit of a struggle getting that on, but that's on. You can tell whether it's leveled by that. But it's close enough. Oh, that's, that's like it. And that. One completed Mizuno 5 iron MP68. That's two done. buy these sort of things here, these rubber bits, for a standard sort of vice. If you can't get one of these, if you can't afford one of these clamps, I like this clamp. This vice, this is a golf club vice, I suppose, clamp, whatever you want to call it. I love it. I'm one of my best friends. It's the only, one of the few tools that gets used a lot. worked. I'll do that again. And then down the middle. Nice clean square cut. Gently Oh, so gently wrap that around. 
push that in. Plug the butt end. Remember guys, you tip the pointy end and you plug the butt end. Big round end. Sorry, noise. Ah. Hmm, we've got we've got pressure. Under pressure. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Some inox, not too much. So side, 90 degrees, squeeze. Like a fish. Slip it over. Slide it on. Just like a cock in a sock. What? A cock in a sock? Why would a rooster be wanting one of these? Okay. And we push that on. Run that up to the end of the tape. Square up and get rid of that. Yeah, that one didn't come off, it didn't split quite as easily as the other one. It's off. Six iron. Spine tape. That's ten years old, that spine. Tape, and it's got a mark there. Tells me where the spine is. I did that ten years ago. Lovely, lovely. That's third, third iron. Ripped. Seven iron now. That was six iron, it's a seven iron. Shoulders are starting to tell me enough's enough. There's a good band, enough's enough. Hair metal band, hippie band. Enough's enough. What a band. Still around, killed by the grunge era. Just like all good metal. Stand that club face up at 90 degrees. And line my grip up with it. I'd actually use the black line, it's a little bit long. Right there. tape than I need. Tape it up to the red line. Run a thumb along there. A pair of scissors, about three quarters of an inch this thin tape. Nice and square and gently and very gently. It's nice and smooth. No ripples. One day I'll show you the old way of doing it. Not today. That destroys one's hands and wrists and arms. That's a difficult way of doing things. And it gives you a different result. And I get the sides. Squeeze there. Clip it over. Push it on as far as you can, because when you blow it up, it wants to come back this way, because it wants to blow it back off again. So we stick that in there. See? This one wants to come off. Oh, there we go. Talk, speak of the devil. 
happened. You see, get it in your bloody head, look what happens. And this is why you've got to be careful with your subconscious, guys. doesn't like this guys they'll be for sale but I think he's gonna like these exceptionally good set of golf clubs trouble is they're X <laughs> that's why I'm not playing them because they're X job this has a rhythm and a process that I should write down I suppose well I am writing it down aren't I I should flow chart it a flow chart makes more sense procedural flow charts wonderful thing <coughs> boring as fuck procedural flow charts but oh, they are a very good thing they can save business a lot of money not many businesses get it Toyota does Toyota uses them that's why they're the number one car manufacturer in the world they use procedural flow charts okay. cut that off wrap around very gently twist it the only reason this tape's on here is to give the grip something to grab onto. That's all. Oh, and to plug the end up. On the sides, squeeze. Flip. I should have gone further. These ones don't go on very far. They're annoying. Golf Pride go on. Oh, you son of a bitch. Golf Pride go on a lot easier than these. They just want to pop off all the time. That's a 
enough for now. All right, <coughs> we're back again. Uh, I've done a few more. I'm on the last one. I thought you might like to see the last one. Uh, this one actually isn't. This is it isn't a um, Mizuno. This is a Snake Eyes. Too rusty. This is a different club, but it's very, very, very close to the Mizuno in shape because it's still a blade, just like them. And blades a blade in the end. So let's get this one done, and I'll show you what a newly built set of irons looks like. Not perfectly clean yet. I don't have the nail polish remover to finish them off. Uh, I'm missing that chemical. I don't remember what it's called. I'll get some in the next day or two and clean them up. I'll show you how that's done. Straight up and down. <coughs> Club shaft up to there again. Mark it there. Grab my fifty mil or two inch tape. Pull out more than I need, idiot. Straight along the top, smooth it down nice and straight. Grab a pair of scissors, cut it off. And very gently, so not to get too many wrinkles. Starting to move down the shaft in length now, as you can sort of tell we're getting closer to the steps. Now we wrap that tuck it in, grab this, Give that a bit of a spray, a bit of a spray, like I said you can do that with petrol, it's a good one, yeah, squeeze it down, open it up like a fish, slide it on, grab me compressed air, golfers know what that means, that means that they've got their shaft and they're recovering it with a new grip just to see what happens when they spit that white thing out the end, you know, the golf ball. So there you go, that's the last of the set. See, there's your, there's your lambkin on the bottom. I prefer that book. I don't like that much, doesn't interest me. So here we go. Spare grip, that's for me. So we got sand iron or a 55 pitching wedge, which is a 46. And then we go four degrees down in loft from there for each club. Where do they want to sit? Stay. They don't want to stay. They're going to fall off there. Look, they're not going to stay. How annoying is that? Come on, guys. What are you doing to me? Thank you. 
Oh, well, here we go. Appropriate. I like my Fuji Kura flag. Here we go, guys. One set of Mizuno MP66 irons up to pitching wedge, and then a Snake Eyes to a rusty blade sand iron 55. So it will bring you more information about them. Might, no doubt Jake will hit him tonight. I might try and get a video of that. I might just leave it until he plays with them. We'll see how it gets to the range. I like it. Good work. I'm sore. I'm stiff. I'm tired. It's a lot of work. So I hope somebody appreciates it. I know Jake will. And at less than 400 bucks. Two or set of iron, it's not bad. Not bad at all. KBS shafts, Mizuno heads, Lampkin grips, gorgeous.